got our witnesses ready. I do hereby affirm. I do hereby affirm that I will tell the truth. I will tell the truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. To this committee today. This committee today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are huge issues here. Huge issues. And the American people and the people of the world have a right to know what's going on because they're part of it. It's not just an isolated thing. And so after confirming the contents of the book with a retired uh, United States Air Force general, I accept the invitation of Victor Vigiani, uh, who's over here somewhere, and his uh, cohort, uh, Mike Bird, to speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto. And uh, I said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. That gave me the dubious distinction of being the first person of cabinet rank in the G8 group of company, countries uh, to say so unequivocally. Since then, I've learned a lot from many sources, including a number of the fantastic witnesses that we have heard these last four days. So they were so outstanding, I was just really blown away with them, uh, the amount of information that was available. And I appreciate uh, every single one of them. Uh, I, with my surgical team of uh, medical specialists, uh, performed 16 surgeries for the removal of foreign objects from those individuals who allege alien abduction. Uh, the individuals involved in this study all presented with uh, no noted portal of entry for any of the objects that were removed. There was uh, no visible scar formation and there was no interruption of the integrity of the skin, even when examination was performed with a magnifying loop, not only examining the area involved, but a large amount of the peripheral area. We used uh, frequencies of uh, ultraviolet light to uh, detect fluorescence in the area of the object. About 60% presented with positive UV light fluorescence with color ranges from pink, green to yellow. In uh, June of 2001, President Bush came on, on scene on ABC News and it was carried throughout the networks and in Popular Mechanics magazine. He had with him a general from the Air Force and he was announcing that the general was going to be the head of a new military force called the Space Force. And they were going to build this force and also put a military base on the moon. Now, nobody questioned him on why, what was the purpose for that. But then September 11th comes around, the terrorist attack comes, this general is, is posted as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the, and the Space Force never comes about. The question I have still, why did he want to create a new military force for outer space unless there's a threat? We have one. We have a space, we have a, a space uh, force. It's in existence. It, and it's been written about extensively. It's there. One more observation before I begin what I want to say. And that is that we spent quite a bit of time talking about the 66-year-old cadavers. And I was glad to have Linda this morning finally say that there are live ETs on Earth at this present time. And um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about uh, not too long ago, was called the Tall Whites. And uh, this is when Paula Harris uh, broke the story just a few years ago. And through her good offices, I had the chance to talk for about three hours with former airman Charles Hall and uh, listen to this absolutely fascinating story of uh, how he was working with, first of all, he was scared out of his skin, but after that, when he got to know them, how he was working with, and finally they became to trust each other and have a good working relationship with the tall whites at the uh, gunnery range 
at Indian Springs in Nevada, and these tall whites were living on United States Air Force property and working in cooperation with the United States Air Force and sharing technology with them. He wrote a book, incidentally, called Millennial Hospitality. There are four different versions, but uh, Paula says that uh, Millennial Hospitality uh, number two is the best. I think that's the one I read, and it's a, it's a very interesting read uh, if you want to sort of get inside the, the problem of what it's like to bump into these people floating across the, uh, the terrain in the, in the desert. Not only does the Congress not know about this, but many people throughout the executive branch don't know about this. And so that it, it, this question of who is it that does know about this, uh, or are there, is there anybody that knows about this? And what we have heard over and over again in the testimony is that there are many pieces of evidence that indicate that this is known about that there was an agency set up by President Truman shortly after the discovery of the crash site at Roswell in 1947 at the Majestic 12 group. And there's been clear testimony that I believe is credible, would be credible in a court of law, that this organization has, for various reasons, taken this issue out from under the oversight of our Congress, out from under the control of our executive branch, and has taken this into a realm of semi-private control. And what you'll notice is that as we come to the last panel of our, our week together here, the issue tends to turn more and more to that issue. What, what has happened? What has happened to our country uh, when a national security state seems to have arisen to conceal certain types of information from our people, from our congressional representatives, even from some of our presidents? And so that the that, that, that question seems to be in front of us right now, attempting to understand the nature of this, this elite group. When you, when you get past these procedural questions to the ultimate question of who are these beings, uh, what are the implications for our human family if we are, in fact, at a point of some rather dramatic transition? And I believe, I believe that what we're going to be experiencing uh, in the very near future uh, has been foreshadowed, as I mentioned earlier, by the positions being taken by the, by the Catholic Church and the Vatican, that they are very clearly attempting to move into a position of utilizing the increasing discovery of more and more planets on which they are more and more confident that life is going to be discovered. John Podesta was the uh, key advisor to President Clinton during the Rockefeller Initiative to have Clinton release all the files in the government hands regarding this, this phenomena. He was a noted X-Files buff, watched all the shows. 2002, he called for the release of all those files. And you must have known what the impact of that might be. He called for the release again in 2003. And then President Obama appointed him the, the, the chair of his transition team. And of course, he was, by the way, when they released the logs of the visitors, I think it was the first 90 days of visitors, he was the most uh, present visitor to the White House in the first 90 days. I, I think that President Obama is well aware of this an extraterrestrial presence. Admitted, he was probably tipped off by John Podesta. But he can't do anything about it.